Welcome to JLo Artist. This channel is dedicated to education and to learning how to draw and to just practice. Today we're going to be using color, colored pencils. Um, I like to use just regular brand Crayola colored pencils because you can get those just about anywhere. Learning how to use color, how to blend color, how to create values and forms with color uh, is an important thing to do. Come along and draw with us. And we're going to use simple shapes here to begin with. So first of all, figure out where you want that, that head to go. And you can start out and say, well, I want his beak and his head to be over here. You can just kind of simple shapes. I just put a little, yeah, just a, a really quick little triangle there. There's his head. His neck is just this S curve. You can kind of come down and try that out there. And, you know, the first time you draw it in, it's never going to look right. His body, look at that arch at the top, and then it kind of comes out. Let's have that tail touching this other side. So as it comes in, let's have that touching right over there. That might be a little bit on the big side, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it just a wee bit smaller. Raise mine up just a little bit. Remember that when you draw it, if you draw it wrong, like I just did, draw it right and then erase what's wrong. If you, if you keep erasing what you just drew because it's not quite right, it's going to be, you're going to keep drawing it wrong. We just do that. We always, we, yeah, we just do. For the legs, I'm just going to do these little stick figure kinds of legs. There's one there, one that goes way down and touches that bottom. Light. Very light. I'll try to draw a little bit heavier for you. Okay, we want to use the entire surface. Now, once we use our, our graphite, once we use our pencil, it's kind of like ink where everything that you draw gets erased. So don't get attached to this drawing. So now what we want to do is we want to translate the values, the lightness and darkness we see, into color. We have 24 colors here, which is ample colors. <clears throat> what kind of colors are you going to use? Let's choose out about 10 colors because 24 is just too many. And it takes you too much time to decide which colors you used and which ones you didn't use. So let's let's eliminate some of the colors that we're, we're not going to use. So like gray and browns. However, there is some very, very dark areas. Some people would call it black. So let's use black. Let's pull out black. That's going to be one of our colors. Although black isn't a color. Why isn't black a color? Right, it's, it's made up of all the colors. So it's kind of like sunlight. Black paint, black pigment, is all the colors mixed together. So technically it's not a color. I guess it's all the colors. Then, what other colors are we going to use? Well, definitely we want purple in there. So there's some purple. And maybe a little magenta. So, yeah, I got black and purple and magenta, which is your neutral. That's a, a red-violet. I, I chose purple because it's, it's a little on the, the darker side. If you wanted to, you could use some blue. I wish that Crayola had indigo blue in there. What about warm colors? What kind of warm colors do you see in there? Specifically, let's, yellow. yeah, yellow up there. But if you look back here, I can see some very warm, light, light yellows right in there, especially right in there. So yellow is a good one. Um, golden yellow or that lemony yellow? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the golden yellow. Just because. What about blues? Any blues in there that would be pretty? 
Well, yeah, we've got just normal blue in there. But I like this sky blue. That's a nice color, too. Let's see. So we've got magenta. Do you see any reds in there? Yeah, a dark red. Let's use this. This is called mahogany. Ah, what, what do we got there? Seven colors? That's probably pretty good. Because as we layer in colors, you're going to be mixing colors too. So you're going to get colors, uh, what do you call them? Happy accident colors? Okay, so we've got black, violet, and blue. So there's our, our darkest colors. Then we have uh, the sky blue. I like the sky blue or a light blue. We have magenta, which is kind of a red purple. And then we have mahogany, which is a, a darker red, almost like a almost a red violet. So these two are very similar, but more on the red side. And then of course our lightest color, which is yellow. So again, color is not as important as value. So what I'm going to do here is with my, my violet or blue, either one, you can use either one, violet or blue, I am going to, sh to shade in as if this were ink. So what I want to do is I'm going to go in, and remember we don't draw lines around things, so the top of his beak, the top of his head, his neck down in here, that we're just going to leave out. We just let it go. But I am going to do some of the darker areas I see. And you can start wherever you want to start. I'm going to start with the eyeball. Just because eyes are very important. The top of his beak is right here. And if I come in just a little bit and say, well, right in there is the eye. Just a nice little half circle, a little Pac-Man shape. And I'm going to zoom into it so you can see what I'm doing. So again, think ink. Think, think that this is ink. And so you can just kind of put in. Trouble is, it's not ink, and so you can add some pressure to it, or you can release a little bit. But just go ahead and draw this as if it were just pencil or ink. Some of it, you may want to... Add a little pressure to, and others you may not want to. Here's that little comb across his head. And just look at the shape of it and throw it in. And it kind of comes out the back of his head. It kind of drops down. There's two little shapes that kind of come out and drop down in there. Two little ends. Now, what about all this stuff in the back here? How am I going to tell where that is? Don't. Who cares? If it bothers you so much that you can't see it, do it like you would with ink. Just add a little bit of a line here or there. Especially on the bottom. And that's really all you need. If we got rid of our graphite, and again, you got to be thinking ink, you got rid of your graphite, that edge is still there. It's broken. A little bit more on the bottom, and then as it turns and comes down, just leave it out. Same thing with the, the top of the head right here, just leave it out. And if you think to yourself, oh, I, I need to see a little bit of that, you can add one or two little lines, maybe a little dot or a dash, and just say, well, this is where it is. But leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. Notice that when I erase with my kneaded eraser, a little bit of the pe colored pencil comes out, but most of it stays there. 
So that's kind of what, uh, that's, that's the whole goal here. A little bit of drawing with your, your pencil. And if it's really light, just leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. Here's that little nostril. It's just a little dark shape there. And you may or may not want to put a little bit of dark where the beak goes. So I'm going to just, I'm going to leave the top out, but uh, put a little bit in the bottom because the bottom's a little darker. Anyway. I'm just going to put a little bit of this in there. There's the little shadow under the beak, but on the top part of the beak, it's it's gone. I'm just going to leave it out. We'll get that with some uh, with some yellow anyway. So again, uh, don't be too concerned, and this way you can change it too. And again, if you want to get rid of your graphite, which I, I like doing, then that's kind of what you're ended up with. Okay. Again, be thinking ink. Along the, his chest, there are some little dark edges. I'm just going to put those in with my pencil, similar to what I would do with ink. That feathered line where you're kind of coming out, this will make it look fuzzy and soft. And our bet bird is very soft here. And even those little feathers that kind of come down, you can see where the, the dark parts are. Add a little bit of the dark part and just leave the white out. Let it go. So that's what we ended up with. And that little area there, you can almost subliminally, your eyes making that connection that there's a line there when there really isn't. Okay, let, let the viewer's imagination take over. Here's his, his back. And I'm going to use my purple now to shade all that gray in there. And again, if the back is very light, which it is right in here, leave it out. You can start out with one little line and then leave it out. So this, this little edge is really light. I'm going to leave it out, and then I'm going to pick it up over here, and then maybe a little bit more down there. And that whole section in the back is gone. It's okay. You got a little bit of light line there, maybe a little dot here or there. You just leave it out. I'm going to actually cut off just a few of his little feathers off the back, just because he's a little bit longer than I gave myself room for. That's okay. Here is his chest. Again, you see those little dark edges. And where it comes out and the light catches it right there, just leave it out. We'll get that later. And again, it's like, like anything else. You can always add more. Look where it's, his leg kind of comes in right there. And look at that shape of darkness and just add that shape in. Here's his... his part of his leg that's down in there, his little, his little joint right there, that back part of his leg is very dark, so I may want to throw that in, that right in there. 
as just a shape. Just look at the shape and throw that shape in. Here's his little foot attached onto that piece of wood, that stick. And now this is the feathers that come across his back. And all that gray, I'm going to try to put some of that in there too. Here's the dark tip of his wing. Throw that in there. Yeah. It's this little, um, little curved triangle shape there. Whatever that is. Now I'm just going to add just a couple little lines down here to just show that that kind of continues on down there. But leave it out. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. We can do it later. As an artist, you, you start making decisions about, you know, what do I leave in? What do I take out? What do I want my audience to see or not see? And with color, it's all about layering in values. So I'm just going to scribble in some purple in there because I know where that gray is. going to be purple. We just want to add more color than we than we normally can see or than we we think we can see. I'll finish his little foot out here, little claws, little spindly claws. Now what I'd like to do is I'm going to get rid of all the graphite. So just like our ink drawing, you can go over the top of that and get rid of all the graphite. If you drew lightly, which drawing on the side of our pencil does, draw lightly, all the graphite's gone. Graphite and colored pencils, when they mix, graphite always wins. It will make your colors muddy. The other thing is, is there is a bunch of gray up in his, his neck here. And so I'm going to just come up in here. Add a little bit more of this purple. If you're doing blue, it's fine. Blue's fine. It's all about values. This will help define his neck as well. Remember, it's all about values. Lightness and dark. So that's our bases. That's that's the basics. Now you want some things to go really dark. And the only thing we've got, I mean, we've got blue and we've got purple. That's as dark as we go. But we're going to do a shade. So we're going to add black to the very, very, very dark areas. Some of those areas that we just colored with that blue or purple maybe aren't quite that dark. So I'm just going to kind of pick and choose what goes darker. And again, maybe not all of it goes darker. You get to choose. So like the very front part of that, maybe I don't want that dark. Or maybe I want some other sections a little darker. One thing I do want very dark is that eye. That eye is going to pop. So I'm going to take my, my pencil, and with the point, I'm going to go in there and really darken in that eye. The center part? Of course. The outside part? Again, you don't have to have it all. You pick and choose how much of that goes dark. Uh, this little section that's down in here, I may not want any of that dark. I may want to just do color with that. 
So what are some other sections along there that you think need to go darker? I'm not sure there's much, if any. Maybe a little bit right there on the tip of the beak. And that's about it. Anything else down in there? Not really. There might be a little bit of area in that purple that we stuck along his neck. Maybe a little bit here and there, but not much. That's our contrast. That's what we want to achieve. High contrast. Here's some more black in there. Anything that is really dark. Or any little section that is really dark. And this is probably the last bit of black we'll do because we'll probably layer purple or blue on top of that. Notice my edges are kind of soft and fuzzy. I use that, that little feathered line where you leave it kind of soft. You don't want a hard edge here. That'll make him look not soft and feathery. It'll make him look hard and ceramic-like. We don't want a ceramic bird. So you can, you can just scribble on the dark side, but there towards the end, just pick out a little, a little edge and just do a little flip with your pencil and make those little soft lines come out. At this point, I may even want to put in that little bit of wood that's down in there, maybe. So, maybe add a little bit of texture down in there to the wood, just so I can know what in the world that thing is that he's on. Just a few little lines, don't need much. All right, let's try some warmth. I'm going to take this yellow. I'm going to just put a little bit of yellow in there. It's going to start with the beak area. And before I do, I'm going to get rid of graphite. There's a little bit of graphite left up there. Get rid of that. And I'm just going to start with this yellow. Now, I can go over the top of some of that purple as well. And look what happens to that purple. It tones it right down. It almost makes it look gray. Uh, a little bit on his eye. I like that a little bit on his eye. I'm going to leave out a little spot of white. Let me zoom into his eye really, really quick so you can see what I'm doing. So right here on the very edge, that's where our light source is coming from. I'm going to do all this stuff around the bottom and the top, but I'm going to leave a little stripe of white right there. Right there. Just a little dot of light. That gives him kind of a, makes it look a little more alive. So I'll just leave that out, leave that alone. I may even want a little bit of yellow in some of this, this fur or whatever it is that's around his neck or his head. Just a little bit here and there, just to add a little bit of warmth to it. Now that I'm looking at it, I probably would put a little bit of green in there, too. So maybe if I do some blue over the top of the yellow, what's going to happen? It's going to turn what color? Mm -hmm. Yellow and blue make? Turquoise. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greenish, right? So this, this is what I mean by you can plan a few of those little happy accidents. So... Down at, towards the bottom here, where that light fur kind of comes out and, and the sunlight hits it, I'm going to just throw just a little bit of yellow into that. 
just so you can look at that and go, oh, yeah, I, I see his fur kind of coming out there. Not fur, whatever that is. So that little bit of yellow, that's just going to lighten up some things. And again, if I go over the top of that with some blue, the the blue, the violet that I've got in there is going to turn blue violet, and the the gr yellow I've got over there is going to turn green. So I'm going to get this lovely color in there that is going to go from green to violet. Sometimes you never know what you're going to get. I'm just going to just a little bit of yellow here and there. Just to warm that up. Anytime you have uh, light that hits an object, especially natural sunlight, it's going to look warm. All right, that's that's probably pretty good for the yellow. Let's try some magenta. Now, I'm going to do the magenta in the in the beak, right there. And move that out into the yellow. What's going to happen is that magenta and the yellow are going to mix and it's going to go kind of red. And the more yellow you've got, the more orange it'll go. So we're going to get that nice, that nice orangey yellow color going on there. And over here at the side where it goes into the purple, it'll still stay with that kind of rosy purple that red or uh, red violet i still need a little bit more blue along there but that's a lovely color right there and i may want to come over that again with the yellow and mix it one thing you got to know is the last color you layer in becomes your dominant color because it's on the top and that's the color that gets reflected onto your eye. I may even want to put a little bit of this magenta in the bottom part of his eye, just a little bit. That'll kind of make it look a little more orangey right there. And again, this color, you can layer it in wherever you feel like it needs to go. Just because I can't wait, I, I've got to do this blue. So I'm going to do the blue around the eye. And again, if this blue mixes with that magenta, that's okay. It'll turn kind of purple. And if it mixes with the yellow, that's okay. It'll turn kind of green. And the blue next to the orange is going to look really blue. And the orange is going to look really orange because they're complementary colors. And if I put some of this blue into the orange, it's going to kind of go brown. Now, if I don't like that brown, I'm going to take some magenta and go over the top of it to maybe make it a little more red. See that brown that's right there? And it is a little darker there, but I don't want it that brown, so I'm going to take this magenta over the top. Hit that. It'll darken it in, but it'll also bring out the red that's in there. And from here, you can layer in whatever colors you want. This is purple. I'm going to put some more purple into it. And the idea is now I want more value, more darks in there. I mean, the whites are already done. So here's some of that green. A little bit of blue over that yellow. And look at it turn green. Isn't that nice? So I'm going over the top of that black with my blue. It darkens it in, it smooths it out, but it's not black anymore. It's kind of that dark blue, which makes it look nicer. So we're getting our we're getting our values what we want.
So hopefully you can see all those colors now starting to come through. The blue on top of the purple, on top of the yellow, on top of the magenta. That's what's making it pretty. It's all those colors. And sometimes you can choose, do I leave some of that yellow in there? Do I leave some of that purple in there? Or do I mix them? Because I'm doing the beak, I'm going to put some of this mahogany into the beak here. Over the yellow, it's going to turn a little more orange. Over the magenta, it's going to turn a little more red. And I'm also going to put it down in the legs. Because that's about the only place I see it. There's quite a bit more purple down in there. And hopefully, you're starting to see colors that you never really saw at the beginning. That is one thing about when you start painting with color, your eye gets used to seeing colors. It wants to see more color. And therefore, everything you look at will all of a sudden become more colorful, more beautiful. You guys will never look at a sunset the same way. Whatever colors you kind of feel like you need, go ahead and layer those in. Yeah, put some pink in there. Oh, yeah, right, right down in there. You could use some, that's a good color. I'm going to put some magenta right down in there. I like pink. Just a little bit. How about that? Ooh, that's nice. And over the blue, it's going to turn a little more purple. Over the yellow, it might be a little redder. So look at that pretty purple that I've got in there. That's the blue, the violet, the magenta that's down in there. And it is different than the, the picture. With that local color, it's just not as pretty. We're trying to make this more pretty, more beautiful. I, uh, I really don't like the violet and the yellow over there. It kind of turns that brown gray. <clears throat> so if I add more magenta to it, it's going to bring out the red as well as the purple that's in there, like I did up here. See how nice that is? Also, if you want to, um, if you want to blend your colors, one of the lighter colors you can put on top. Sometimes you can do this with white. Um, I like to do it with uh, like a yellow. So if I take my yellow and I really do some pressure, it's going to blend what's underneath, smooth it all out, give it that nice color. Look at that beak. Isn't that nice? Once you finish the head, the rest of it's going to just come together. It'll just, it'll just happen for you. Here's that violet, and now the violet almost looks gray. When you look at the gray, you think, oh, okay, it's violet. I'm just doing violet on top of everything there. Really add some pressure to it. That'll just smooth out all that gray and that dark that's there.
I'm going to add some more of that mahogany down to the leg, and then some magenta. Because we want it that pinky, peachy kind of look. But the mahogany is going to add that darkness to it. When you when you come down to the wood, the wood and the and the bird are almost the same color. Go ahead and use the same colors in the wood, but leave out the light areas. So most people are looking at the head. That's your that's your area of emphasis. So once you get the head really done in there, everything else you can kind of just almost scribble into it. So I'm just going to go through all these wings back in here. I'm going to try to pick out the darkest areas. But if it's not in the right place, that's okay. Because nobody cares if it's exactly right on. Any areas that you feel like are a little darker, just scribble those in. Add a little bit of pressure to it if you need to. I haven't used much sky blue in here yet, and so I'm going to just go back into it with a little bit of sky blue here and there just to darken in some of the mid-tone or the mid-grays. And the sky blue over the purple is going to turn more of a blue-violet, but a nice, pretty blue-violet. And over the yellow, it's going to turn a little more green. And over the magenta, it's going to go a little more purple. So I'm going to get a whole bunch of colors going on in there that I probably wouldn't get if I didn't use it. I really like that light blue, that sky blue in there. It's beautiful. And that little bit of green that you get out of it. It's almost like you're training your eye to see some of those colors. Because you couldn't see this before. And all that white that you think is white, but then it's in the shadow, that light blue is going to do it. So like down here in the leg, you know, even in the wood, a little bit of light blue in there, you'll have it. It doesn't have to be everywhere. Thank you. 
So we have kind of a psychedelic bird, but yet you look at it and you think, wow, it's pretty, but it still has all the, all the values. Hopefully you enjoyed this, though. And hopefully you learned a little bit about color that maybe you didn't know in the past had a little bit more experience with drawing forms with color and hopefully somewhere down the line art has made your life a little bit better make sure you sign it and i hope you all have a lovely day